Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to take a couple minutes to talk about analysis of an RC circuit when it's charging, that being a circuit that includes a resistor and a capacitor in series. And a couple notes to get us started. You need to remember that an uncharged capacitor behaves like a wire, and a charged capacitor behaves like an open circuit. Having said that, let's take a look over here at our circuit. We've got our power supply, our voltage supply, VB, a battery here. We have our resistor here, and let's just show our current, I, going through our circuit. And we have our capacitor. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, to our circuit. And we'll make a clockwise loop of our circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the voltages, voltage drops I see as I go around the circuit. So the first thing I see is the negative side of VB. So I'll write that as minus VB. Then I have the voltage drop across the resistor R. By Ohm's law that will be I times R, so plus IR. And finally we'll come to the voltage across our capacitor. VC. So plus VC because I see the positive side first and then I'm back to where I started. And Kirchhoff's voltage law says all of that must sum to zero. So now I can make a couple modifications here. This implies knowing that capacitance is charge over voltage then voltage must be charge over capacitance. So I'm going to put the battery voltage on one side to say that the battery voltage, VB, therefore equals IR plus Q over C. Now, I still have an equation that has a couple different variables in it. I've got current, which is going to change as a function of time, and charge on the capacitor, which is going to change as a function of time. I'd like to get this down to one single variable, and I can do that by recognizing that current is the derivative of charge with respect to time, I equals dQ dt. Now when I rewrite this, I can say that the battery voltage, VB, equals R dQ dt plus Q over C. Now I've got an equation in terms of one variable, charge. It's a differential equation. I've got charge and the derivative charge in it, but we'll deal with that next. We're at least to a point where we can start to analyze what's going on here. So first off, let's see what we can do to get all of, all of our variables on one side. And the first thing that bothers me is this resistance right here. Let's get that over on the left-hand side. And we can do that by dividing everything by R so VB over R equals dQ dt plus Q over RC. All right, now let's rearrange this and say that dQ dt equals VB over R minus Q over RC. And now if you look, we've got our denominator of R and RC over here on the right hand side. We can change that up. If we multiply this by 1, calling that C divided by C, we've still got the same thing, but now we've got RC and RC on the right hand side. That'll allow us to make another simplification here to say that dQ dt equals CVB minus Q all over RC. So what I can do now is I can try and get the Q's on one side and my differential of time on the other. And I can do that by saying that DQ over CVB minus Q must equal 1 over RC DT. Now let's see what we can do as far as integrating this to get rid of our differentials. This is going to apply then imply that the integral of dq over cvb minus q is going to be equal to the integral of dt over rc. And I'm going to evaluate this on the left hand side my variable is q so we'll go from charge equals zero the charge at time zero on our capacitor to some final charge q and on the right hand side our limits of integration are going to be from some time equals zero to some final time t. 
we've got a formula on the left hand side that lends itself to the form of du over u which is you know the integral of du over u is going to be the natural log of u the only issue is instead of being du over u I have du over negative u but if I put a negative sign here that works I just bring have to bring a negative sign out there so that I really haven't done anything that times a negative that times a negative gives me a positive so now I've got the form of the integral of du over u and on the right hand side well rc is going to be a constant so really what I have is the integral of just dt and that's going to be really easy to integrate so let's take our next steps here this implies then on the left hand side I'm going to have integral of du over u we know that that's going to be the natural log of u where our u is cvb minus q evaluated from q equals zero to some final charge q and we've still got the negative sign there and on the right hand side we can pull out that one over rc and we're going to end up with t over rc now just to make this a little bit easier to deal with instead of dealing with the negative log I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative one so this is gonna become positive and my right hand side is gonna be negative t over rc now let's do the evaluation of that integral on the left so as we evaluate that that's going to be natural log of CVB minus Q minus the natural log of CVB and that's all equal to negative T over RC now using the fact that a log minus a log is just the log of the quotient I can rewrite that as the log of CVB minus Q over CVB must be equal to minus T over RC alright couple more simplifications we can make here I don't really like this natural log we can simplify this a little bit if I raise if I take E and raise both sides to that value so as I do that this implies then that what I'm going to end up with here is going to be e to the log of something is just that something CVB minus Q over CVB is going to be equal to e to the negative T over RC and with just a little bit of rearrangement I can then take a look at that left hand side CVB minus Q over CVB is going to be 1 minus Q over CVB equal to e to the minus T over RC and we're trying to solve for Q so let's rearrange this even further to say then that Q over CVB equals 1 minus e to the negative T over RC and I can multiply both sides by CVB to get Q as a function of time Q as a function of time then is just CVB times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over RC so I've solved for the charge on the capacitor now and knowing that CVB is actually equal to the maximum charge on the capacitor remember that C equals Q over V or Q equals CV we could also write that as Q as a function of time is equal to the max charge on the capacitor times 1 minus e to the negative t over RC what that really means is if we were to make a graph of the charge as a function of time we have with the time of 0 e to the 0 is 1 1 minus 1 is going to be 0 at time 0 a charge of 0 and as we go to longer and longer times as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger this becomes smaller because it's a negative denominator it becomes inconsequential so that we rise up eventually to Q max or CVB as our maximum value and this RC is what's known as a time constant we often call it tau the time constant RC 
And what it really means is it's the time for the circuit to reach 1 minus e to the negative 1, or 63% of full charge. So if we wanted to take a slightly closer look there, we could say that when it gets to about 63%, percent, 0.63 CVB is going to occur at about 1 RC, or 1 tau, whatever time that happens to be. And when you get to about 5 tau, or 5 RC, you're awfully close to that asymptote. You're practically at the maximum value, 99.7% of max. So there's our charge on the capacitor. All right, going further, we now know the charge on our capacitor. We can also look at the voltage across our capacitor. The voltage across our capacitor, if you remember, is just charge divided by capacitance. We know that Q is CVB times 1 minus E to the negative T over RC divided by C. We're just going to get the voltage on the battery times 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. So our graph then is going to be basically the same shape here. And if we look at that as a function of time, at time 0, e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. And as we go over longer and longer periods of time, we're going to approach our asymptote here of the battery voltage, which makes sense because we started off by saying that a charge capacitor behaves like an open circuit. So it's going to behave like an open circuit over time and mimic the battery voltage after a long time. And again, you get to 99.7% of VB at about 5 tau, or 5 time constants, 5 RC. We can even go and take a look at this for current as well. Current is just the derivative of charge with respect to time. And if we look up here, we already know the formula for charge, CVB times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative T over RC. So all we really have to do is go differentiate this. That's just going to be the derivative with respect to time of what we've already worked out, CVB times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. If I take the derivative of that, that's going to imply then that the current is equal to CVB times e to the negative t over rc we also have to take the derivative, the differential, of negative t over rc, which will give us an rc in the denominator. Our capacitances will make a ratio of 1, and I end up with the battery voltage divided by the resistance, vb over r, times e to the negative t over rc. Now, why does this make sense? Well, if you think about it, at time zero, the uncharged capacitor behaves like a wire. So at that time, we could pretend that the capacitor isn't even in our circuit. We're going to have a total current flow of VB over R. So VB over R is our maximum, or our initial, current flow. So this is I zero, or I max, times E to the negative T over RC. So if we graph this as a function of time, we're going to start off with our maximum current when the capacitor is acting like a wire. Got the full current, VB over R, as we're charging things up. And over time, as T gets bigger and bigger, we're going to get a larger and larger number in the denominator as we approach no current flow, which happens, remember, after a long time, a charge capacitor acts like an open circuit. Once it's acting like an open circuit, we have no current flow in there. We drop down 63% of our current in the first time constant. So in the first time constant, if this is RC, we have dropped 0.63% of our initial current, I0 or where we have left a remaining 37%, 0.37% of I0. And by the time we get to 5 RC, again, we're practically at zero. We've dropped 99.7% of that initial current. So, gives you an idea what happens when a capacitor is charging in a circuit. 
we start off by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law, create a differential equation that we can then solve for the charge, and that allows us to find the charge as a function of time, the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, the current as a function of time, and you could take this further or look at it in other ways. Key to note, though, in all of these solutions, we have something of the form, some constant, times either the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over rc, where rc is your time constant, or a constant times e to the negative t over rc itself. So most of these, you could pretty much guess the solution before you even go through the analysis. Then go through the analysis and verify you get what you expected. Thanks for your time. Make it a great day.